Hi, I'd like to talk to you today about the CrossFit 2i Plus Infant Transport Ventilator from Biomed Devices. Uh, this is our standalone model that we typically use for about three different applications. People will use this in conjunction with the Benell High Frequency Jet Ventilator. Uh, as such, it can be mounted on the same pole. It's got a built-on blender. We added the flow meters, uh, coiled hoses. Uh, it's also used uh, attached to a GE giraffe shuttle. Uh, what they'll do is use the giraffe shuttle. It's kind of a, a big docking station with the uh, GE giraffe incubator warmer. Uh, and they can attach a vent to it and uh, transport the patients from uh, labor and delivery using that. Others will, uh, level one, level two nurseries might put this on a, a stand and use it as their temporary vent until uh, transport comes. It's probably most uh, often associated as a, the built-in version. Uh, this is typically built into a transport incubator uh, made by Airborne Life Support, uh, International Biomedical, that also known as Air International Biomedical. As such, they put the blender in a different spot, but the software in both of these units is exactly the same. So when I get to the uh, function of the software on the standalone, it, it works the same as this one. This is actually replacing the MVP-10. The MVP-10 uh, first came out in 1973 uh, this doesn't look anything like the, the CrossFit, but as you'll see, you know, a lot of the uh, settings are, are very similar. But the built-in version will actually replace the MVP-10. If you're still using an MVP-10 in your transport incubator, and there are some that are using it, uh, it really makes a lot of sense to uh, consider upgrading. Uh, the MVP-10 came out in 1973. Uh, neonatal ventilation actually started in 1970 when Forrest Bird invent, came out with the baby bird. But, and the ventilation really didn't change in the NICU until about the mid 90s. Uh, and the, at that point, that's when flow triggering started to become a thing and they were letting the babies trigger the vent. So really since uh, 19, the mid 90s, about 1995, uh, Level three uh, NICUs have been using uh, triggered vents for their babies. So, you know, it really makes sense. If the NICU is using uh, triggered vents, why wouldn't transport use them? The mantra of every transport team is typically, we provide the same level of care in transport as we do in the NICU. Well, if you're still using an MVP-10, I guess I'd have to argue that uh, statement because uh, the vent's probably the most uh, important part of that transport. Um, the other thing is mo today most uh, referral hospitals they don't even have the old-fashioned non-triggered ventilators. Uh, they have a triggered vent uh, and if the transport team shows up with the MVP-10 and tries to put the patient on that after being uh, placed on a, a vent that allows them to trigger you know, the transport team really has to start from scratch with the stabilization process. So it can make the transport uh, longer uh, before you're ready to take the, take the baby. So it, you know, really makes, makes sense to consider that. Uh, the other thing too is the CrossFan is actually more gas efficient. The old MVP-10 is a pneumatically powered vent and uses gas to, to run itself. So it, it actually consumes a lot more gas. For more products and information, please visit our website at www.biomeddevices.com.